It builds Sensei here. Today in this video, we're going to do this effect. Okay, so to do this effect, I'm going to need two pieces of footage. I'm going to need my original raw footage, and then I'm going to need some Firestock footage. Now, I actually got this Firestock footage from the wonderful people over at HitFilm. Last Christmas, Christmas of 2016, they gave away a bunch of stock footage as a Christmas gift. Um, and I don't know if they're still giving that away or not, uh, but I'll leave a link to the description or in the description below to the video that they actually gave that away with. Uh, and you might watch that video too because it's a pretty nice little video. Um, but if you can't, if they don't have it there, you don't have any uh, stock footage, just on around online, find some fire footage up against a black background, should be good to go. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my raw footage and say make into a composite shot. I'm going to click OK. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrub through the footage until I get to the point where, boom, that's where my fire is actually going to start. I'm going to use the right mouse button and slice it there. And then it'll stay there until I blow it out. And then I will uh, slice it again. Okay, this middle piece, I'm going to call the fire piece, right? This is the fire uh, part of the video. And that's what I want to add my fire footage to. So uh, the first thing I need to do is I need to track where my thumb is throughout that. Okay, so what's going to happen is, is I'm going to twirl it open. And under tracks, I'm going to say I want a tracking point. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. I'm going to bring this and put it right there. But actually, I'm going to start at the beginning here. So that way, I know exactly where I am, right? And I'll be able to track this exactly. Now, because I have some lighter background and stuff like that, it's going to be a little bit difficult to actually make that track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually track it, okay? So instead of hitting this plus or this arrow key track forward, I'm going to track forward by one frame. And I'm just going to manually follow it. That way, every time it gets a little bit off, I can reset it up. I'm going to do this, and then I'll be back. So now that I've tracked everything... You can see that that track looks pretty good. It's with the thumb the whole way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer, a point layer, and I'm going to call it Thumb Position. And then I am going to, under the tracking data, transform that data to the thumb position and click Apply. So now if I go back out to the viewer, and I actually, you can, you can see that that is following my thumb exactly. And that's what I want. That's where I'm going to put the fire. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm come back here to the very beginning. Actually, what I'm going to do is just to make this simpler, I'm going to tighten up that to only where I need it to be. And that way, when I, on the very first frame, it pops up so I know exactly where it is. Okay, so if I go back over to media, uh, I'm going to take my fire stock footage and I'm going to put it right there on that same spot. Okay, now you'll notice that you can't see anything because it's all black and then it kind of fires up, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that and change the blend mode to add. Now I'll be able to see behind it. As you can tell, if I use my mouse wheel to scroll out, it's quite large. So I'm going to have to really shrink that down a lot. And then when I zoom in here, uh, I can really dial it in and I can put it right exactly on my thumb, okay? What I'm going to do is, and that's basically where it's going to be, so I can go ahead and now say that fire stock footage, parent it to my thumb position. So now wherever my thumb position is, and that's where that is too. It looks pretty good. I like it, right? Okay. All right, now all I have to do is as soon as I get to the point where it blows out, and we then we remove it. But it does look a little bit strange because it kind of pops up, and then there it is, and then I blow, it just disappears. So what I want to do is when I do the blow of it, I want it to actually kind of tip over as if I'm blowing on it, right? So about here is where I'm going to do that. I'm going to zoom in nice and close, and what I'm going to do is twirl open the transform properties. I'm going to keyframe the opacity. I'm going to keyframe the rotation. I'm going to keyframe the position. And then I'm going to move forward to basically the end of the whole 
clip. And I'm just going to rotate that, oh, about maybe negative 75 degrees. And then I'm also going to reposition it so that it's sitting there on my thumb still. And then if I back up and it gets a little bit off, I can just sort of move it slightly. It just needs to kind of look like it belongs, you know. Yeah, perfect. Okay. All right. So now it just sort of tips over like that. At the same time, I want that opacity to drop down to zero. So now if I do a little bit of a render preview, I just hit that little button right here next to the main preview. And then I'll get an idea of what it looks like. Yeah. And you can see this blue bar. So now that's a RAM preview and I can play it at full speed. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Now let me back out here. And what's nice is, is even though I scaled a fit, I readjusted that. It's still uh, there. It's I have, It hasn't uh, disappeared. And yeah, that looks pretty good. I like it. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Now, the thing about this is, is that it it's a little bit weak, right? So what I just did was I went ahead and just duplicated that to make it a little bit brighter, right? So there's now two of them. Uh, and both of them put together look pretty sharp, uh, and it looks fairly realistic. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. If you would like to keep up with the latest tutorial videos from HitFilm Sensei, consider liking the HitFilm Sensei Facebook page, following the HitFilm Sensei Twitter feed, and subscribing to the HitFilm Sensei YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. A new video comes out every Friday, and thanks for your support.